Now that our walls, doors, and windows and framing macros are all in place, we can start generating the wall panel layout. All the functionality needed for the wall panels is located within the Classic Wall Framing tab. The functions on the Classic Wall Framing tab are grouped together in respect to the workflow process, whereas in the first group of functions, walls are divided into panels and the separate wall panel elevation drawings are then created. The second group has functions for editing the wall panel elevation drawings, and the third group contains miscellaneous supplementary functions. To divide the walls into panels, from the Wall Panelizing group, select Generate Panels. Filter choices for choosing Exterior, Interior, where both wall types are available. I will use Control A from the keyboard to select all walls, then Confirm. For corners, we can select if the horizontal walls extend through the corners with the vertical walls held back, or vice versa where the vertical walls extend through corners with horizontal walls held back. Or we can choose a clockwise pattern for extended walls, or a counterclockwise pattern for extended walls. I will use horizontal walls extended, then select OK. Now we can define the first panel number, and are first prompted for the type E panel prefixes. Remember, this value comes from the panel label field of the wall properties. I'll start those with 101. And now we can select the numbering for the type I interior panels. I'll start those also with 101. And now we have the panel layout, dimensioned and labeled. The walls are divided up into panels with respect to the rules set up in the project parameters and in respect to the designated panel break macros. Before generating the panel elevation shop drawings and associated framing layout, if necessary, aspects about the panel layout can be modified with related generate panels and edit panel functions. For example, here's a situation where the automatic panel break occurs at the same location as an intersecting wall backer. I want to move this panel break 12 inches to the left. This can be done by using the Edit Panel, Move Panel Break function. Select the panel break, press Q to reset the relative origin, constrain along the X axis, type 12 for the distance, and OK, and escape to end the function. Once the panel breaks are established, the next step is to generate the panel elevation shop drawings and associated framing layout. This is done by the Generate Elevation function. Select Generate Elevation, Control A to select all panels, and Confirm. The panel elevation shop drawings are all being produced following the framing rules that are set within the wall properties. Once the panel elevation drawings have been created, it's a good time to press Control S to save the project. The functions within the panel group apply to the individual wall panel shop drawings. The open function allows individually selected wall panel shop drawings to be open for viewing and or editing. Press and confirm closes the open drawing and allows another panel drawing to be opened. Each wall panel elevation shop drawing contains a completed piece layout with cut list, dimensions, labels, section view, as well as other general information about the panel. Press Confirm to close the open panel drawing. Press Escape to completely end the open panel function. Although not imperative, after the wall panel elevation drawings are created, we can also generate the 3D framing model for selected wall panels or for all the wall panels by using the Generate Framing 3D function.
Control A to select all and confirm. Pressing the F2 key will toggle into the 3D window, which is currently the architectural model. The F4 key allows loading a different drawing model pair, and I will select first level wall framing drawing model pair. And that changes the 3D view from the architectural model to the framing model. The 3D framing model provides a nice check for spotting conflicts or other framing issues. The open panel drawing function can also be used in the 3D window. However, editing framing macros should be done within the 2D layout. So, for example, if this wind brace needs to have three end studs instead of two, I'll escape from the open function and press the F2 key to toggle back into the 2D layout and make a change to the wind brace macro. Double click the wind brace macro to access its properties. Change the number of end studs to 3. Press OK to save the changes. Then regenerate that individual panel elevation drawing. Pressing the F2 key to toggle back into the 3D framing model shows the update of the three studs. Also, opening the panel elevation shop drawing reflects the same change. The next change I'll make will be directly within the wall panel elevation drawing. For this example, I will copy these three studs to a distance of 6 inches to the right. I select the studs, then right click to select copy. Select a reference point, constrain the horizontal direction, and type in a distance of 6. Select OK, then press Escape to quit the copy function. Press the Panel Drawing Windows X button to close the panel drawing. When a change to the panel drawing has been made, the following prompts appear. Select Yes to save, then the Set Right Protection prompt appears. Right Protection is a mechanism that prevents the panel elevation drawing from being regenerated, in which case my manual changes to the panel pieces would be lost. However, for now, I will select No, and then select Yes, to update the panel dimensions. Notice the 2D framing layout and the 3D framing model have been automatically updated to reflect the changes. The open panel drawing function is still running and I can continue to open and edit other panel elevation drawings. There are additional editing functions available under the Edit Profile pull-down menu. Edit Profile allows changes to be made to individual pieces by way of a piece property dialog. For example, to change from one material to another, so this 350S 162-33mm piece can be changed to a 68mm piece by selecting the 68mm piece from the cross-section library. Select OK to save and close the piece property dialog. The panel save function will update the panel drawing without closing it. The piece change is now reflected in the updated label and cut list. There are also functions for adding additional profiles, ladder backers, and for cutting and trimming pieces. When finished, close the panel drawing and press Escape to end the open panel function. Once the wall panel drawings are generated and ready to be submitted, they can be plotted into a PDF book. To do that, Go to the Vertex File menu, Export Flyout menu, select Print PDF Sets. From here, we can choose from a predefined set of drawings that can be plotted to a PDF book. Panels Walls will plot all of the wall panels into one file, whereas choosing Selected Panels Walls will show a list of panels to choose from to be plotted into the PDF book. I'll just select all, click OK, 
Use the default file name. Click OK again. The panels are being plotted to the PDF file. And when completed, your default PDF viewer will open the completed file. The PDF file is stored within the project's folder, which can be accessed by going to the project document browser, right-clicking on the settings branch to select Open Project Folder. This opens your Windows Explorer directly into the project's folder. Within there is a subfolder called PDF and where you can find the PDF file.